Hi, it's Philip. Welcome back to episode two of my Long War Let's Play. We're going to pick up right where my last video left off, which is intercepting our first UFO. All right, the alien trophy is complete. If I feel like my poor dudes are will deprived, I can send them out with one of those. Okay, small UFO. Let's see how painful this is. Ah, oh, I didn't order more interceptors. Oh god, I hope this works. So you start off with four interceptors, and you can have six on each of the major countries. Um, and you'll need a lot because UFOs are no pansies. Let's hope we can take this one down without putting all of my ships out of commission. We have eyes on the bandits. Finger on the abort. Disengaging. All right, one hit, not bad. Contact detected. My interceptors also gain exactly. XP, one for each UFO they down. Um, which I think equates roughly to a five percent better chance to hit. Well, that was unproductive. Engaging bogey. Uh, stop hitting me. All right. Awesome. It actually felt like I did something this time. So before I forget, let's go to the hangar. Okay, so looks like three of our ships are out for a week. Uh, hopefully another UFO won't show up before our interceptors do. And you can avoid panic from a flying UFO as long as you attempt to intercept it. You send one ship to it. You attack, you can abort if you don't want to actually fight it. And you can use that to avoid panic increase. You have to attempt to take it out. But um, we did better than that this time. You can also see why superior interceptor weaponry is key. All right, so uh, let's send our Sky Ranger. You'll notice that the UI has been updated so that you can take eight people at some point, and it's got room for six. Um, okay, so, none of our, none of our survivors from the first mission are available. Let's see. So the starting armor has two pockets. Let's look at what we got here. In terms of aim, movement. This guy is gonna be our foe sniper. Now you'll notice there are items here that don't exist in the vanilla game. We've got, from top to bottom, high capacity mags, which give you each of your weapons one additional shot. Doesn't apply to rocket launch or anything like that, but it'll give you four shots from your assault rifle, three from your pistol, um, for a single equip. You have the battle scanner, now an item. You can use one per mission, and if you happen to take the perk as well, it stacks, so you can get additional uses of battle scanners. We have ceramic plating, plus one health, you can only carry one. Um, it's actually plus one armor health. So you have base troop health and you have armor amount health. Uh, the starting armor of all of your units is one and they have, I think, four uh, personal health. You don't get wounded until your armor is all gone. 
So you can take one damage or two with ceramic plating before you end up hospitalized for a week, um, which can make a big difference in this game with the large number of missions and the cycling teams. Um, the alien trophy, as we've said, gives you 15 willpower, uh, which is great for psychics late game and for people who've been scarred by near-death experiences. You can carry smoke grenades. If you take the perk, then you can use a smoke grenade as your first action and not end your turn, um, which is awesome. Plus, you get to carry for free without actually equipping it like one smoke grenade. And you can stack that with smoke grenades in your inventory. Frag grenades are standard, first aid kit. First aid kit heals two health, um, and medic. the medic perk allows you to use it multiple times. It has one use, standard. And you can use it to revive a fallen soldier um, from the very beginning of the game. So you've always got that option of restoring them. And finally, the Shredder Rocket is an item you can carry. Uh, only people who've taken the... Uh, I forget what the perk is called, but the Rocketeer Squatty perk can equip it. But that means that your rocket launcher troops can carry two rockets from, like, Squatty level on. Alright, so, for this guy, uh, he has a high aim. We want to keep him alive, so we're going to give him ceramic plating and a laser sight. He'll be hanging back and sniping since he has excellent aim. Um, this one we're gonna give another frag grenade. take a first aid kit just in case. Let's take a smoke grade just in case. And let's give this guy a laser sight. So that I've got some options. Alright, so. Second mission. Take out the B team, if you will. Get ready to deploy. Our AO is within the continental United States. Operation Severed Thunder. Alright. Burning Forest mission. We'll monitor those readings from here. Strike one is authorized to assault the alien craft. Going straight up the middle is a bad idea. There's not great cover. And you tend to draw everything from the map. Let's... Send this guy charging ahead. Here's our sniper -y type. We can tell him by his extra health and his lack of any kind of throwable grenade. Going up on this left side is also really tough. Um, it looks like it has decent cover, and then it doesn't. Alright, this is our other good aiming person. We're just going to go up the right, in the trees.
One major, major difference between Long War and Vanilla is that the outsiders in every UFO are extremely tough compared to the vanilla versions. Um, shockingly powerful. Especially the first time. That can be a really nasty surprise. So, uh, yeah, prepare yourself. Of course, you'll be prepared because you'll have seen this video. But, uh, I think the first time I encountered it, it was a little, <laughs> a little unpleasant. Shh, I think I heard something. It's kind of important to avoid going into the UFO where the outsider is until you've cleaned up a good bit of the, um, crash survivors. Yeah, you can see there's a lot of map over on the right, or a lot of map to work with over here. I'm expecting contact fairly soon. Possibly not this turn. I know there's a reduced number of enemies on crashed UFOs, as you might expect from some sort of flying machine that spews fire when it smashes into a planetary body. I'm sure my team would love to get their hands on that thing. Uh, hmm. Okay, so, another thing you'll notice in Long War that's different from the original is that drones show up on their own. There's no cyber disk here on mission two. Um, as regular enemies. And you'll see the early game enemies throughout more of the game than you did before. Okay. Let's see. Everyone is a little too far away. Well, Drones are no pushover. They don't do a shit ton of damage. Uh, excuse my language. They, um... Are fr pretty threatening to... Noobs. Like my troops are. Let's 
So I'm gonna hope to lure him into an ambush by this other team set slightly back. They tend to move a lot. They're also damage resistant, as are all mechanical enemies. Well done. Alright, these dudes, possibly drawn by the sound of my grenade going off. You'll notice that one of these sectoids has higher health than the other. Um, one of the other features of Long War is alien leaders. There can be one leader per pod, and its leaders have a... Well, they increase in power alongside the base um, enemy alien type um, as the aliens research improvements. They also have additional health and often additional perks that can make them really nasty. Um, the Thin Men ones can have lightning reflexes, so they automatically dodge the first reaction shot against them. And I know I saw... Um, I can't remember what they're called. Well, we'll get to anything else later. Okay, so... We did good with the drones. We scared off the drones. Let's, uh... Let's fall back a little bit. Try and lure these poor sectoids into an ambush. Sectoid, but foolish. <clears throat> Need a resupply. Now, did this other guy go into Overwatch? Did he flip out? Questions I should be asking myself. That's no good. They're falling back. That's a significant amount of no good. Lucky me. So, um, I know Firaxis fixed it, but Long War also adjusted the panic rate of your units shooting each other in the back when they panicked. So, that happens less pleasantly. Okay. Covered. 
Let's just try and stem the tides of advancing things. All our people unpanic. Hopefully. Ugh. Thank you, heavy cover. Thank you. Things could be worse. Thank you, damage roulette. Wear this puppy down. Back up so it can't flank us. and take it out. Nice. Let's do this. All right, we brought one med kit. He's a little wounded. What are we doing here? Now there's one drone out there that's probably recovered from being panicked. We've encountered three alien pods. So, there may be one more. Um, that's a guesstimate. I can't remember the exact numbers of things that are allowed. But, I find flanking the outsider is extremely important and useful. Um, grenades help a good bit. Generally, the best way to take them out is to flank them and pour on the fire or to rush in with two or three people at point blank range and pray that you get enough critical hits to put them down. Uh, later on shotguns, advanced weaponry will do the job quite easily but the initial the initial approach is uh, the initial encounter is pretty difficult. Our readings can't be right. Oh, that was bad. That's a being of almost pure energy. That was bad. And this is why you plan a little more carefully than what you just saw. Ah, oh, God. Also note that the outsider regenerates. Uh, as well as having a lot of health. 
and an, a deadly weapon. Uh, quite a tear. We need to put him down fast, that healing will outpace. My ability to damage it if I'm not careful. moves forward to flank, hopefully we'll take him out. Come on guys, come on guys. It's one drone. Damn it. Another hospital stay. Oh, thank goodness. Goddess, the thing can't use cover. Hostile neutralized. Mission accomplished. All right, well, Operation Severed Thunder went all right. It's about as good as you can expect for your first encounter with an outsider. Um, grenades, grenades and assault rifles do not make the outsider an easy thing. Alright. It's worth it though. Worth it. Alright, yo, nice. Recovered a power source and a nav computer. Illyri oh yes. Oh, excellent. Um you can access the gray market from engineering these days. However, we should be careful in choosing what items we release. The research team may not have discovered their true value yet. You really want to hoard most of this stuff. It takes a lot to perform research. Um, I don't know. Power sources and flight computers, again, you'll get a lot of chances at them. And there were some good money, which you will certainly want. All right, let's look at our soldiers. Got a lot of tired, stressed out soldiers, relaxing from missions. Looks like our first team probably won't be back in action in time for the third mission, hopefully. Dwayne Henderson, VIP from mission one. All right. Let's do the next interception and save right before the mission. Shiv is coming in 13 days. Come on, interceptors. Ugh, an abduction. So you notice abductions only happen one at a time. You don't have to make the uh, mandatory hard choice that the vanilla game imposes on you. And they reward you with 100 credits. So they're on, that's all they give you. You get the leveled, pre-leveled soldiers and other rewards um, from giving council member countries whatever they ask you for, which happens more often. And the abductions are just a great way to make money. So heavy resistance. This will be painful without a solid team. I can't afford to ignore it. But uh, I guess we'll get into that in episode three. Thank you for watching, and hopefully I'll see you next time.